Hi, welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the horizontal bar chart. Now, the horizontal bar chart is actually somewhat similar to the standard bar chart that you have available inside of Power BI, but there are several additional customizations that are available to you inside of this visual. So things like have, having the ability to have overlaying bars and for the ability to actually have some additional, additional customizations to the actual labels on the chart. Uh, in general, I'd say that this bar chart just has some additional functionality that isn't necessarily available to you inside the standard bar chart. Uh, this one is developed by Microsoft. Let's go ahead and quickly jump into this one. This one should be a short uh, video, but we'll walk you through how to use the horizontal bar chart. All right, so in this example, we're going to be bringing in some data from the Oklahoma state government and looking at the expenditures of that state government. So we're going to start by going up to the Get Data section, and we're going to bring in some data from Excel. We're going to use the Excel workbook here called Oklahoma Government Expenses, and I'll select Open on that one. Once I've selected that workbook, we'll choose the expenses spreadsheet inside that workbook and hit load. Now this is going to bring into Power BI that data set that we're going to use, and you can see that show up on the fields list on the right-hand side, and we can start to bring those into different visuals. For this example, though, we're going to be bringing in some visual or a visual called the horizontal bar chart from the marketplace, which you can find by going up to the top bar here, the top uh, ribbon, and selecting from marketplace. Once you select that, you should see the marketplace appear here where you can choose all of the different visuals that you'd like or choose which ones you would like to include in the Power BI desktop for this example. And in this scenario, we're going to bring in the horizontal bar chart. So you can search for bar chart and you should find the horizontal bar chart towards the top of the list here. If I select add, that'll bring that visual into our visualization pane on the right hand side. And then I can add that into our design surface and start to bring in different elements into it. So for example, let's say for example, I wanted to see the uh, appropriations and the spending for those appropriations shown on the horizontal bar chart. So a pretty simple bar chart. You can see there's already a label that's automatically shown for it. Uh, you can notice that you, if I had any other measures, I can actually bring additional measures on the overlapping values here, and you can have multiple overlapping values. And you could also bring in additional values that you want to show in the tooltip section here. So if you want to bring anything additionally into the tooltip section, you can certainly do that. So a uh, pretty simple visual. So like I said, this will be a quick video, but a few things that you'll find that might be interesting are underneath the customization window here, or the format paintbrush, you'll find a few things that might be interesting to you. One is the ability to, how, how, basically how you would clear a filter. So you might be familiar with how to filter a value by a selection. If I wanted to select something like higher education, you can notice whenever I select that, it's attempting to filter everything else I have in my report. And the other items are grayed out here. Now, to clear that filter, to basically remove any filter, what you often can do in other visuals, you can actually click in the background of the chart and it would clear that uh, selection. Unfortunately, by default, that's not turned on. That capability in this visual is not turned on. You can select the item again and that'll clear the filter, but maybe you want to make this a little easier and just click somewhere in the background of the visual. To make that capability turn on, there's an option over here called Clear Filters on Background Click. And if you turn that on, what it allows you to do is just click somewhere in the background of the visual, and that'll allow you to clear any filters that you have selected. So that's a nice uh, little tweak that you can turn on or turn off. The next item here is the font size, which is kind of self-explanatory. You can turn up or turn down the font size on any particular visual here. So you can go underneath the font size uh, section and select that. If that property is turned off, so if I revert this back to default, it's going to be dynamically showing the font size based on the height of the bar. So I'm actually going to leave that turned off because I'm going to adjust the bar size here in a few moments. Next, as we work our way down, you can see there's a section here called Blend Experimental. And underneath the Blend Experimental section, there's some different modes that you can turn on where you can actually play around with and show different items and show the values differently in the chart, just depending on how you want to see it. So there's this hue one that you can look at. There's a few other little uh, interesting ones that you can play around with. Play around with it and see which ones work for you. If you don't like it at all, just turn it off. So this is just an ability to change the different modes of how you visualize both the label of the text and the label of the data here with inside the chart. It's up to you how you want to see that. Next, you'll see the bar settings. So underneath the bar settings, this has to do with the opacity. So if I wanted to, I could knock down the opacity of the bars, something like 50% or maybe 20%. And you can see how it actually adjusts the chart. You can then also, if you wanted to, you could change the colors of the bar. So if you wanted it to be purple, for example, you could do that. Or if you wanted to, if you were using an overlap measure, you could actually change the color of that overlap measure as well. 
In addition to that, you can also change the color that's being used in the font. So if you want to make that something uh, different like this, the text color can be changed as well. All right, I'm going to revert that back to how it was. A little bit lower down, you'll see the bar labels. Underneath the bar labels, this is where you can actually change the uh, settings of the, 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 the labels of the measures here that you see. So if I wanted to change the color of those, you can certainly do something like that. And if you wanted to, you could change the background color of the actual uh, amount. I'm going to revert that back to default, but tell you what, what I will do is I'm going to make the highlight color show white. Okay. A few other things that might be interesting to you, if you go a little further down, you can change the alignment of the label. So if you want to make the labels, the measure labels, to show on like a right alignment, you can do that. So all of them are shown as right align here. That might be uh, something that you want to do, depending on how your data is presented. Uh, I'm going to leave that how it was. I'm going to turn that back off. And then underneath the bar height, you can play around with the, obviously, the height of the bar. So if I bump this up quite a bit, you'll start to actually see, let's say we bump this up to something like uh, 50 or maybe even higher. I think right now, because of the size of the visual, dynamically kind of building that size for me. Uh, but you can come in here and you can actually, autom uh, not automatically, but you can uh, adjust the bar size that's shown in, in this visual. So it's up to you how you'd like to see it based on the selection and based on some of the properties that you have selected above. So uh, some of these actually impact what you do below. You can adjust the minimum height of the bar using this feature. Next is the bar shape. If you go underneath the bar shape section, I actually particularly like this. This is one thing I really think uh, sets this one apart from the traditional bar chart. Some of these other properties you can certainly do in the original bar chart. But what I do like about this is you can actually change the shape of the bar. So right now it's set to bar, but I could also make it a single line if I want to. I could make it a lollipop, which is kind of interesting. I like that. Or what I'm going to select in this case is the hammerhead option. And that hammerhead option almost looks a little bit like a bullet chart. A little bit, not quite. Uh, but it gives you the ability to kind of change some things there. And tell you what, I'm actually going to leave it as a lollipop. I like that view. You can also change where the labels appear. I kind of like the, what, the fact that the label appears below the item here, but you can kind of determine where you want the item to appear, the, the label for the metric to appear. Do you want it to be at the top of the, the lollipop here or somewhere else? I kind of like it just like it appears here. I think that looks pretty nice. And that's really it for this one. The rest of the properties that you have in this particular visual are ones that are available in every other uh, visual, whether it's a custom visual or a standard visual. So it's a quick one to look at here. You guys are probably already very familiar with bar charts, so this is not something incredibly new to you, but it's a nice way to set a chart apart. If you want to use something like the hammerhead or the lollipop chart, it really does make it have a different view than what you're traditionally going to see in a normal bar chart. All right, that's it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed this custom visual, and we look forward to showing you our next one in our next module. Thanks a lot.